It was the beginning of a new year. I was living at a hostel in Galway, Ireland, about to begin a semester as an exchange student at the local university. I had found a place to live, but I couldn't move in until about a week later. The hostel was nice, and if it hadn't been for the extremely loud snoring of the stranger in the eight-person dormitory, my stay there would have been perfect. I hated this person for ruining my sleep. He was an odd character. He had very little luggage, didn't communicate with anyone, and it was obvious that he was living at the hostel as some sort of last resort, not as a tourist. To solve my sleeping problems, I tried to feel compassion for him instead of intense annoyance. It helped. This new sympathy led to a genuine interest in him. What was his story? Why was he living in a hostel? Why did he look so sad? My interest in him most likely stemmed from the fact that I had just come out of a severe depression. I believed he was consumed by an overwhelming sadness that I knew about. I saw it in his face. Luckily, I did not identify with him, but felt sorry for him, and was glad to have moved on myself. My only effort to communicate with this man was a slight smile at him in the kitchen of the hostel, which he ignored, or probably didn't detect, absorbed as he was in his own little world. He often sat at the hostel's computers looking at ads for used cars. Sometimes he would walk around in a suit, very different from his normal clothes, talking loudly on his mobile phone. Maybe he was trying to become a used car salesman or it made me think of those lovable losers from the movies who have one project that keeps them going which they think will bring them love and appreciation. A week later, I moved into a house with four other students. I quickly forgot about the man from the hostel as an exciting student life began, with great courses, Irish pub culture and new friends from all over the world. One morning as I was eating my breakfast, I flicked through the local newspaper. Normally I would never read the paper, but I just sat peacefully and ate my porridge. The paper didn't catch my attention until I saw the headline on page 5. Investigation continues into taxi driver death. Reading the article, I suddenly stopped chewing. The driver had been in his forties and had been living at the same hostel as myself since Christmas. I knew it right there and then. It was the man from the hostel. I was sure it was him, but I still went by the hostel later that day. The manager was reluctant to talk about it at first, but when he found out that I wasn't from the press, he became more helpful. He showed me the dead man's passport. It was really him. He had been a taxi driver, and had tried to build up his own fleet of taxis. Apparently, he was known around the city because his taxi had been full of disco lights and karaoke screens. I wanted to think of him as driving around the city, jolly and chatty like the other cab drivers in Galway. But it must have been pretty depressing, being in that disco taxi, if his thoughts and mood were in an entirely different place. On the day of his death, he had been stopped by the local Garda as part of a routine check. Since he had no insurance, they had to confiscate his vehicle. It never happened, though. According to the newspapers, there was no clash between him and the policeman as he stepped out of his taxi into the rush hour traffic, walked down to a bridge close by, and jumped into the cold, rapid Carb River in front of horrified pedestrians and motorists. In class the next day, I told a friend about the incident. He didn't seem surprised by the whole thing, and said that he had seen several people pulled from the river after trying to kill themselves. Apparently, Many people had chosen to end their lives in the Carib, just as many people choose to jump from the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. According to my friend, most of the suicides occur around two specific times of the year, just after the Christmas holidays and towards the end of term between taking exams and receiving grades. I found it disturbing that it happened with such regularity. Taking place in the beginning of the year, the taxi driver's suicide fitted in well with the statistics. It makes you think that maybe we all struggle with a lot of the same issues 
and that our problems aren't so different. It is said from testimonies of survivors of suicide attempts that they often regret their jump in mid-air. Ken Baldwin, whom today is a high school teacher, miraculously survived a jump from the Golden Gate Bridge in 1985.